Attention travelers, the next time you stay at a big name hotel, it's going to cost you, especially if you are a frequent traveler. Travel expert Mark Murphy joins me now with why. All right, so these hotel fav these hotel programs mm -hmm. where you join and you get special deals. Sure. Yeah. They're not doing so well. Let's start uh, with Hilton, for example. You right. say this is the third time in the last decade they've actually reduced what they're offering. Right. What's going on? Basically, what they're doing is they're devaluing the currency, the points, if you would, that you earn as a frequent guest. And by devaluing those points, you need more points to get a stay. And therefore, you have to stay more and spend more to get your free nights. So they're making you work harder and they're getting more room revenue as a result of that. And I think part of it is just to bring that liability down. So they're doubling points needed in the peak season. Yep. For example, with the Hilton Double Tree, we're seeing that uh, staying there will require 1,000 to 3,000 more in reward spending. Thank you very much. Right. So, you know, I, I look at this as frequent travelers. This yeah. is not for the average leisure traveler. These are business guys that are going and staying. And then they use those points and cash money for their leisure travel. people watch this network all the time. And I and know they rely on this because, let's face it, if you're a member of any kind of Rewards program. Yep. You game the system. You track the system. You try, <laughs> and you try to get everything you can out of it. And I think Absolutely. people get so, you know. First, it was the airlines. Yep. Now it's hotels. Are they in such dire financial straits they just can't make it? No, actually, the business is coming back. So average rates, <laughs> average rates are up. Occupancy levels are up. So the hotel so business is us. on recovery. They're just finding a way to. I think us. what they're looking at is looking at the liability they have with all these points that are out there, and they've got to pay the piper at some point in time so if they can reduce that without impacting the loyalty and it comes down to that how much can they squeeze you without getting you to go somewhere else and if okay. they're all doing it let's talk about Marriott yeah. they're doing the same, same darn thing right uh, talk about the points and how they're changing them well so what they're doing is requiring you to earn about 25 percent more spend about 25 percent more to get the same redemption because what they're doing is they're moving some of their hotel categories up so 36 percent of the hotels that they have are moving up a tier in the terms of the categories which means it costs you more to stay there for free so it's gonna, again you got to earn more points it's all about you staying more and earning more, more to stay there for free right. all right but you know, you're a frequent traveler. You're I staying am. there all the time. You've earned of course. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Marriott's Longworth will require 500 bucks extra in reward spending to get a free right. night there. Yep. So poo on them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's talk about Starwood, uh, Starwood, which is a very popular. Yeah, Starwood's had one of the best loyalty programs around, and they're just increasing it about 25% on average between the cash and points program. Yeah. So again, you can pay a little bit and use your points and cash it in for upgrades <laughs> as well as total stays. So people like that because they can upgrade uh, in some cases using the points along That's with the good. dollar amount. So it's kind of so nice. The W and the West and these are two very yeah, popular great brands, chains. Exactly. Great brands. People love them. It will cost you more at the so end of the day. For your free stuff. Yes. To cash in your free stuff. Okay. Starwood, Starwood St. Regis members need to rack up a thousand more points plus an extra 30 bucks. To get the but stay you know what? You get to stay at the St. Regis. It's not a bad place. No, it's right? not a bad place. I but you have, to, you have to stay more and spend more. All right. What are my strategies for coping sure. with this? Let's say, okay. I, let's say I'm on the road all the time. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm a salesperson, right? And, I, and I'm out traveling, yeah. and, I, and I use the rewards programs to their best effect. Mm -hmm. What do I do now? All right, so you're staying, you're accumu you accumulate them. You have to look and try to travel off-peak with your rewards because just like it's cheaper to travel and pay the dollars, it's cheaper to use the points because during peak season, you saw Hilton Honors, they're going to double in some cases the hotels during peak season, especially their most popular ones. So try to book away from those, and those are the room nights that they want to just give you because at the end of the day, they're not going to sell some of those room nights. So it doesn't hurt their revenue and their bottom line. That's critical in, in terms of how they look at it. A couple other things, call a travel agent. I just stayed at the London Hotel, independent property on 54th Street last week, 349 rate. Oh, really here in New York. In New York City. But I got $100 food and beverage credit, and I got a free breakfast, and so they brought me a fifth me break stuff. down to $200. I By the way, I booked stuff. it with the travel agent, and they had access to a special hotel huh. program that they're part of. These guys know some of the ins and outs. Just so we're check. supposed to start using travel agents again? I thought, Absolutely. They I thought it was over. Travel agents sell 60 to 70% of all cruises, tours. They sell 60% of all international airline tickets, and they are a great service provider that give you a high touch married to the high tech in the marketplace. All right. Well, I'm used to shopping online and comparing prices. Mark, who's coming after me next? So we've had the airlines and <laughs> hotels. Who else is going to try to get more money out of me? Well, I hope you spend some money on some vacations this year. So why not jump into a cruise? Take a cruise. A cruise after that fiasco? Absolutely. Hey, better deals right now, and they're a great vacation experience. Even though there's a fiasco, <laughs> 20 million people cruised last year. And that was one ship know. with 4,000. Put it Some in perspective. Some people just sit on the ship, go nowhere, and have no food, no water, no air conditioning. That was bad luck, right? I, I wouldn't, wouldn't want to bet on, uh, bet on that cruise. Well, yeah. 
It's worth thinking about. Mark, thanks for coming on and Thank opening our minds to other options. <laughs> I appreciate it. Always trying, Jerry. Always trying. <laughs> well, on to this day in history, business history.